welcome to Walking with Dean. Got a nice walk for you today, and we are at the All Gunpowder Works Country Park. Probably the best walk in Faversham. <laughs> Just been to the visit centre, got my uh, map of the place, very informative and uh, yeah, so let's go follow the map. Like I say, it probably is one of the best walks in town, it's, it's a nice one in town but this is on the outskirts and it's just a nice place to visit. Bring your dogs, bring your friends. Okay, well, I said about Coppersin, I didn't know what it is, and it's a very informative board. Managing woodland as coppice is important for wildlife. Apparently, you have to um, regularly cut to the ground to regrow, getting extra shoots. And this helps the wildlife, insect activity, and what it does is it lets light in and warmth. Let's the sun in, warms that area up, and the old insects and that can get in there. Oh, yeah, there you are. Just walk around the place, there's loads of these uh, boards around. Things for the kids to do block, spot, bluebells, hazel, foxglove, even the grey squirrel. Right, I'll get around and walk a bit more. Over here, there's a big drop here, must be uh, 20, 30 feet, more 30 feet, I suppose. Now this wall here, some of you ex-scouts, or I'm not sure we still do it, used to be a climbing wall. Probably don't do it now. It's, it's, yeah, the scouts used to climb that wall with the old rope and whatever. And uh, yeah, well, I hope you've been enjoying the walk. And have enjoyed it. 
I'm going to uh, just finish off with a few more shots, meet my guest, and uh, it'll probably end there with him and uh, back at the tea hut. They do do teas here, some people don't know that. They've got a sign outside the door, which you'll know on the video. Yeah, it's been a great little walk. Met some nice people, lovely people we walked around and uh, a little chat to them, some of them. And yeah, it's a really nice place to come. So if you get a chance, come down here and you won't regret it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this walk. It's uh, now gonna, we're going to meet someone who's really helped this place get along. And, uh, you know, if it weren't for him and other people, this place wouldn't be here. It'd be dug up Hello. for gravel. Hi, right, Mike. Hi. Thanks for meeting me this morning. Nice to see you, Dean. Yeah, it's, um, we, what, what I was thinking of doing, we're going to go around talking about the place, how, how it started and how it's going now and where it's going to be in the future. Yeah, well, yeah. don't know about the future, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, we'll have a walk round. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, Mike, tell, tell me, how did you come about this place? Well, I, I moved to Faversham in 1980 uh, and I guess I didn't really know about it until the best part of 10 years later. Um, uh, and at that time, the, the site is owned by Brett's and uh, wasn't supposed to have any uh, public access, although people did come in. Um, uh, and I got to know it, I think initially when I was a councillor and um, a local resident uh, wanted to complain about the uh, lack of safety on, on the, uh, the big wall of the Corning House. Um, uh, and that was how I found it and then started coming back um, have a nice wander around for a little bit of bird watching my, uh, my son Tom was just getting into mountain biking and uh, it was a good fun area for that yeah. so um, I got to know it in the sort of early to mid 90s uh, and then got very interested in Frankly, the danger the site was in, uh, in that um, Bretts, perfectly legally, if they'd wanted to, could have dug up the whole site for gravel. And that would have been a real shame. Um, they certainly weren't uh, pushing and intending to do that, but they could. So, uh, mid-90s-ish, early to mid-90s, we got uh, talking to Bretts and negotiated that Bretts would um, lease the entire site to Swell Council for 150 years. Yeah. That would create protection. And then um, uh, Arthur Percival from the Faversham Society uh, also pressed uh, historic England for it to become an ancient monument and that was agreed so we really by the uh, mid 90s got the site fully protected okay. and then the next thing of course was well how do we make it attractive to the people of Faversham this, this all, all these little bits just there as an example this was all open yeah before the restoration and it's a really important place for overwintering bats right but because it was open the kids used to get in there the bats got disturbed all kinds of problems and and having been able during the restoration to shut up the entrances then you know the bats are protected again. Yeah. It may look tatty, but uh, no, it's, it's very quite important. An important area. Yeah. And then this, of course, was, was fine. I can't remember when we got this, but um, in about 1933 they stopped making gunpowder here 
um, basically I think because they were afraid of the coming war and the manufacturing plant went up to Ardeer in Scotland um, and was carried on manufacturing there and that plant became part of ICI uh, and back I think in the late 1990s or may even have been the early 2000s we persuaded ICI to let us have back one of the um, mills that, that made the gunpowder. Oh right. So it's, uh, it's all been reinstalled here. Did they install it or did they just give it to you and you're, you've had to arrange no, it? No, but it, basically they? they gave it to us. I, I think I think they were kind enough to deliver it down to Kent, but oh, yeah. um, uh, we had to get contractors in because, I mean, pretty heavy equipment. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, so it's all there. Potentially it could work, but um, I, I don't think anybody would be too keen if we started making gunpowder again. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, right, we've talked about funding. Yeah, so, so after the whole area was protected, the question then, of course, is what do we do with it? Uh, I mean, you, you could just leave it and, and it would no doubt be very good for wildlife, but uh, I think everybody wanted to make it somewhere for the people of Faversham. So there was a big application to the uh, Heritage Lottery Fund. And uh, to cut a long story short, we got just about a million pounds from them. And that allowed the, the whole area to be restored, if you like. So many of the buildings, if they were in reasonably good condition they were fully restored if they were part knocked down they were just uh, stabilized and looked after and that gave you this this beautiful linkage between the industrial archaeology of the site and the natural history and the woodland um, uh, and once that was done uh, and we we worked with a local environmental charity in, in both doing the work and looking after it afterwards that was what in the where are we the, the later 90s uh, i don't remember the exact date we had a whole site which was totally open to people um, and We've tried since then to keep the balance between the natural history of the site, the industrial archaeology of the site, and what people want to do. Uh, and, and by and large, I think that's been very successful. The, the Friends Group, which has worked right the way through this, this period, has done an enormous amount of work in, in restoring the site, in, in looking after it, in helping to expand biodiversity on the site, uh, in, in looking after the buildings, in making really good access to people. So we now have the, the, the visitor centre which people can uh, come and look at and get a cup of tea or coffee and there's some loos there and some seats they can use. Uh, we have the whole site covered with notice boards of what you can see in different areas and, and this um, uh, mill pond is one of the really important areas in, in terms of wildlife. Uh, we get um, uh, mallard as you can see now here, uh, coots, moorhens, Kingfishers, reed warbler, sedge warbler, um, grey wagtails, occasionally chetty warbler, but I uh, haven't heard any yet today. Uh, and it is just a really nice place to be. Uh, and this uh, boardwalk that we're on um, is it, part of the education programme 
uh, and we'll bring groups of uh, youngsters, primary school kids, here to um, uh, fish for all kinds of um, little critters that are in the, uh, the mill pond uh, and they can look at those, study them under a microscope, see what's there, begin to understand how we, we actually have to look after the biodiversity of this site but also the biodiversity of the whole town. So, it's, um, but first, how many people are our friends of the Gunpowder Works? I don't know the, the, the exact number. Okay. I guess it's probably about 40. Um, we, we do a, a Sunday once a month uh, volunteering down here and typically 15 or 20 people come to that uh, and then we have a, a smaller group uh, of, of people who have uh, a bit more spare time uh, come every Thursday morning uh, and there's probably about half a dozen come then uh, and they tend to do the, the, the heavier work yeah. and then the Sunday group uh, tidies up and uh, renews paths and, and uh, uh, we'll have the odd uh, bonfire where we've cleared an area of the woodland. Um, so it, it's quite good numbers. On the other hand, um, when we're doing a tree planting or a hedge planting exercise, we'll promote that on Facebook and we've had in excess of a hundred people have turned up to those days. Wow. I mean, seeing three and four year olds planting hawthorn trees is, is quite something. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so would, would you say this is one of, or if not, Labertoon's greatest assets? Well, as in visitor wise, I don't, I mean, not, in, not as in the town like the Guild or no, but no. this story has got a rank among I, I think it. I think it's way top of the, uh, of the list of, let's call it natural history assets of, of the town. Right. Um, it, it's not a huge area, I think it's only about uh, um, eight hectares I believe. But it's beautiful woodland. It's got all the waterways in terms of the mill pond and then the little canals that they used to carry the gunpowder around on. Yeah. Uh, it, it's important for bird life, trees, flowers, um, uh, mammals, bats, uh, mice, all, all kinds of stuff. Hedgehogs occasionally, not as often as we would like, um, very important for insects. So it's a really important area and it's also arguably the finest gunpowder site in the whole of England uh, and that does attract a lot of visitors. So you've got ordinary people like me that like a, a country walk and a bit of bird watching will use it. People, of course, walk their dogs here, um, and I sometimes wish they could look after them a bit better. Um, uh, youngsters come, uh, we're, we're in family groups, we run a lot of education programmes, but also there are archaeologists interested in the site, and the Faversham Archaeology Group has done a lot of work here. Uh, and we also attract other visitor groups that the, the friends will normally take for a walk around the site uh, and then they're uh, normally kind enough to make a donation for uh, buying a few more trees. Oh, right. That's a good point. Because, um, how else do you raise money? It, I mean, you've still got to buy things to maintain the place. Well, First of all, Swale have a, a ranger that looks after this site and the, um, uh, the site uh, around Milton Creek in Sydneymore. Um, and he does a huge amount of really good work. And in terms of 
equipment needed, normally swale will will purchase that. Um, swale are also kind enough to um, uh, either run or pay for uh, training courses for the volunteers so that they can learn how to use, um, well, they, they can learn health and safety issues, they can learn how to use uh, uh, chainsaws, brush cutters, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the routine money comes from Swale. Yeah. If we want to do other projects, we basically have to hunt around for grants. And um, uh, each Swell councillor, for example, has £2,400 a year that they can use in their own area for small community projects. Um, uh, and I've made several grants from that pot to, to the Friends Group. Um, sometimes there's some national money available, sometimes a bit of swale money available, which has been uh, perhaps to get over the Covid problems or, or perhaps in the uh, uh, green issues to try to improve biodiversities. And we can find a thousand or two from those kind of, of sources. So we've always managed, and, and indeed we have projects ongoing at the moment. We want to develop a, a, over there um, a pond which is clear of all other water sources so that there'll be no fish in there. And so the amphibians, reptiles, um, insect larvae and so on yeah. can thrive because in here, they have a hard time because there are quite a lot of fish and the fish eat them and, and so, so do the ducks to, to some extent. Uh, so we have the money for that project. Uh, we have some leakages in the le leets and we have the money to um, resolve those leakages by, by puddling clay into the uh, bottom of the leets yeah. and that's, uh, we have the funding for that. And we also last year had funding to renew all of the signs around the site in terms of showing people what's here and what they can do and what they can look at. So this, this is the area where we're planning a new shallow pond and it won't be connected to any other waterway so there won't be fish in that pond and that will make it uh, a much better environment for uh, amphibians, reptiles, insect larvae, um, you know, so frogs, slow worms, uh, dragonflies and, and, and so on. Um, we're, we're just waiting for the final permissions there and then the friends group who, who really do focus on all of the major improvements that we're making around here. They will uh, uh, install that um, uh, and then at the same time we've got the um, uh, whole series as you walk around the site of um, notice boards telling people about what it's like, what this bit of the uh, area is like and, and here for example uh, a very good area in the uh, summer and autumn for uh, dragonflies uh, and then um, all of them are QR coded so that you can get more information if you just uh, yeah. stick your phone onto, uh, onto the QR code. What do you say about about it being a separate pond? How will you keep the water in it? Because there's not a pond there now is it? No. Is it well, it'll be lined with it, pond it, it'll no, it will be um, it will probably be lined with clay. Oh, with the clay yeah. side, yeah. yeah. Okay. And and it, it's possible at certain times that it could dry out, yeah. but that's what ponds naturally do. Yeah. Uh, and um, 
once you get a decent rainfall, it'll fill up again. Well, you see we're back here at the visitor centre um, and, and the Friends and Swell Council between them make sure this visitor centre is always open at weekends and uh, bank holidays um, uh, and perhaps even more importantly the Friends work the second Sunday of every month and also every Thursday morning arriving here 10 o'clock and doing the maintenance jobs and the improvement jobs that are so important so we, we, we thank them for their work but even more important we need more friends who will carry on that work at, at, the, uh, at the site uh, and uh, if you uh, want to do that then either just turn up uh, or uh, contact the, uh, the friends through the website or gunpowderworks.co.uk uh, or uh, tackle them on Facebook. Okay then, Mike, thanks very much for uh, giving me your time this uh, morning. Right, it's a pleasure.